Are you ready? Stand by. Welcome to the Bring It Show, episode 158. I'm your host, Dave Hartman, and this week my guest is Nick Atkinson. And uh, we do a little bit of a follow-up to the uh, the episode we did back in June, and you can find that at 3gunshow.com. And this one is a QA and a with questions from the 3Gun Talk group in Facebook. So before we get started here, I want to say thank you to all the uh, contributors that have uh, supported the show on Patreon. Thank you so much. Your support is keeping this thing going, and I'm very grateful for it. There's some cool stuff coming up in the uh, the next few months here that I'm only able to do because of your support as a patron. So if you're interested in becoming part of the Patreon group, we've got a uh, we've got a cool little community going over in the Facebook group. Um, you'll also get access to like match recon episodes and things like that at various levels. And you can think of it as crowdsourcing to support a, a creator. And I'm I'm the creator. So I'm creating the three gun show here and trying to do uh, much more with it other than this weekly podcast and your support helps me do that. So thank you very much for being a part of it. If you are, if you're not, go check it out at patreon.com slash three gun show. That's P A T R E O N. Now, like I said, this is a follow up to an episode that Nick and I did back in June, and uh, we actually recorded them back to back, but I gave you a couple weeks buffer here so we could uh, get some other good content out. So I asked for questions from the Three Gun Talk Facebook group, and uh, this is what y'all came up with, and Nick answers them here, and some of them are fun, some of them are funny, and uh, some of them are pretty technical, so you're going to learn something here as well. Now, a quick note about the uh, Three Gun Talk group on uh, Facebook. I've long been a supporter of this group here. I like to use it to ask questions and everything because Kevin, Kevin Travis, the uh, the owner, and the the two moderators, Jerron and Dan, do a really good job of weeding out trolls and a holes, right? And as we know, the internet is full of both of those things, so we don't need that in Three Gun. And they do a good job of keeping the uh, the forum really cool. So recently, Kevin came to me and said, "Hey, Dave." would you want the three gun talk group? And, uh, I said, yes, yes, absolutely. I would. So we, we just transferred uh, ownership this week. And, uh, if you want to be a part of this group and you're not an a-hole and you're not a troll, <laughs> check it out. Uh, it's in the show notes of this episode, three gun show.com slash episode 158. But, uh, you can also just, uh, go to Facebook and search three gun talk, bring your awesomeness, bring, uh, bring all your good vibes and everything. And uh, we will continue to make this a great community that Kevin, Dan, and Jerron have done so far. And uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be fun. So check it out there. Again, show notes for this one, 3 gunshowcom slash episode 158. And enjoy this one with Nick Atkinson. Nick. Dave. Welcome to the 3 Gun Show Q&A, baby. <laughs> Are you pumped? <sighs> you know, am, am I supposed to be honest right here? Or? Yes. Okay. Um, yes. <laughs> you know, so, uh, I did this, uh, little Q and a thing with, uh, with Rick, uh, birds all. And, uh, he was a little nervous because, uh, I think Rick is ornery, throws a lot of stuff out there and he was expecting a lot of it to come back. But, uh, we're looking at the questions here that, that, uh, you got, uh, when I threw this out to the, uh, the Facebook community, <clears throat> what, Q, what questions do you have for Nick? We're going live and, uh, we're going to do your Q and a afterwards. So it's been 90 minutes and we have some questions and these are actually some good ones. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't know. What do you, what would you expect as, uh, how many questions do you expect to get in 90 minutes? Well, I don't know. People were at work when we started. So I think that's about right. You think so? It's, it's kind of a slow time for Facebook. It's 6 PM. That's true. It is a bad time for Facebook. Central. It's usually later when, uh, when it gets hot. Yeah. Either that or nobody cares. <laughs> that too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Well, are you ready? I'm ready. All right. We're going to start with uh, Jared Bender. Jared says, how many snowflakes does he melt daily with Beastmaster hunting? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm not sure. It's based on um, a daily thing. I think it's more of like a cumulative over uh, – you can't, you can't quantify it. You right, know? right. It's like uh, one day – 
we post a bobcat picture and it, it's just like um it's like the snowflakes enter hell, you know, and just everything is obliterated. And then the next day they somehow come back. Uh, like, I don't know. Um, but I think it, I think it depends on um, our Facebook posts and our social media activity that day, but it's definitely in the millions. No kidding. Oh yeah. So uh, to that Ryan Dixon comments, squirrel wars should be a TV show. Man, if if you could find me somewhere, somebody that would pick it up, I'd be all about it. I would travel all over the country shooting, shooting squirrels. squirrels. Dude, we got him in the backyard. My dog, he, he would love that with you because he wants to go play with those squirrels, but they never want to play with him. No, they don't. They play a lot better with dogs when they're dead. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Parker would love that. We'd st- we'd get a cold to stuff some. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man, that would be awesome. Squirrel Wars should be a TV show, and it could just be called Squirrel Wars. We got to give Ryan Dixon a producer credit. The way um, the way hunting shows work, though, mm-hmm. is you have to go to those networks that have hunting shows mm-hmm. with all of your own sponsors. Yeah, it's like Three Gun Nation. Yeah, except for like hunting. <laughs> right. But yeah, yeah. But I mean, that's what that that was their model, right? <clears throat> well, I mean, that's the network model. Right. So you got to take you got to go to Toyota and be like, hey. You want to sponsor the show? You get a commercial. Right. Or and meanwhile, or Sportsman Channel is going to Toyota and saying, "Hey, you want to sponsor this? And we'll give you better placement. We'll give you more views and blah blah blah." Yeah, it's oh. a racket. Oh well. Uh, Nick uh, Ryan Dixon writes: Do you think you are at a disadvantage being one of the few people still shooting a Glock at the top level of the sport? Um, I don't think so because if I had thought that, then I wouldn't be shooting a Glock. Um, you know, it's. Uh, there, we've talked about this on podcast before with you. Mm-hmm. I think there's more advantages than there are disadvantages. So no. All right. Uh, Andrew Stanfield says, why don't you post more on IG? Rick Birdsall is beating your ass at that. Even Keith Garcia does sometimes. Um, so check out the Beastmaster Instagram. It's Beastmaster hunting on Instagram. Uh, I post almost every day. Probably every other day. Mm-hmm. It probably averages to every day because some days I go crazy and post like four things. <laughs> but that doesn't uh, help you, by the way. Yeah, well, you know, it's just the way things are, Dave. I can show you a program that'll help you with that. I've got one. Do you? Yep. I just sometimes I don't know. Oh, just, we've talked about. Sometimes this. it just strikes me, so I just post. I got you. Uh, but anyway, yeah. So uh, because we just started Beastmaster, uh, a lot of focus has been put on that. You're putting that in that area. Got it. Yeah. All right, Chance Lanzillo says, why does he like coaching so much? Why do I like coaching? I don't like coaching. You don't I mean, like coaching? Are you talking about coaching at a match? I don't know. That's You know as much as I do. Um, that might be a like a sar- sarcastic question. Yeah, I don't it could know. be. Because I have publicly stated that I disagree with matches that allow coaching. Oh, okay. So, yeah, whenever that r- argument... R- run with that then. Well, whenever that argument's been on Facebook... Mm-hmm. Um, because uh, it I came up it. about that match up uh, up north, I don't remember, the shooter source match, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So there's coaching allowed uh, by pretty much everybody mm-hmm. or whoever you wanted to designate, uh, and I just disagree with a uh, a competition where there is money on the line for some people um, or significant prizes for some people that um, if you beat someone else, it is not based on your skill. It's based, it could potentially be based or is heavily, heavily influenced by how good your coach is. Mm-hmm. So like, for example, if, um, where do you usually finish in a match? Me? Yeah. Ah, uh, geez. This year hasn't been so great. Actually. <laughs> well, just give me an average. It's usually probably like 50 to 60% this year. Okay. So if there's a hundred people, you're 50th. Mm-hmm. Okay. So if, you took me to a match and I coached you. Mm-hmm. You think you do better? Yeah. Okay. So especially if, on the long range portion, if you're shouting out distances, and I don't have to remember all that. Okay. If you took Wade to a match and he coached you. Oh yeah. Would you Would you beat me and you? No. Exactly. Sorry, Wade. So, well, I mean, it's just an example. You yeah. know, you're going to take. Uh, it 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 does add a different element to the game. Mm-hmm. I think if it's going to if there's going to be coaching allowed, either. It needs to be a separate division, okay? Coaching allowed in this division. This division is the people who really want to see if they're better than everybody else. <laughs> True competition. <laughs> right. um, or it needs to be a team match, and your team is allowed to coach. Mm-hmm. You know, um, And that argument was raging. I think there was like 600 comments on Oh, you're kidding. Yeah. No, How did I, I miss that one? I don't know. Jesus. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, I just 
threw it out there that, and and I very rarely comment on stuff, big posts like that, especially. Um, but I just threw it out there that I disagree with it, and that's why I'm not going. So, huh? Interesting. Yes, I, I was wondering why you weren't at that one because it is in Texas. Well, I mean, and people, and here's other people's argument is the guys who are going to win don't need it. Right. Okay. I can think of three matches in particular that I finished less than one second or one point out of first. Okay. So I'm either second or third, depending on if somebody else squeeze in there, where if someone had been following me and just hollered out something that I... Oh, like when you ran past targets at the... uh 2016 Thurgood Nation Southwest Regional. There you go. And I was about to throw up before that stage. I just felt terrible, so my brain wasn't working right. Mm -hmm. And if somebody just said, hey, there's more targets, don't dump your rifle. Yeah. I'd have finished first by a long shot. Like, a lot. It's true. Like, 30 seconds. That's very true, because that was a very costly go back. Exactly. And I only lost by, like, two and a half seconds. Um, Huh. But, uh, or there was a stage, uh, Generation 3 gun. I finished second last year at Generation 3 gun where there was a target behind a tree, and it was kind of like a gotcha target, you know, uh-huh. that uh, I walked that stage six times, never that knew that target. Is that a tar- target? Um, yeah. Yeah. Never knew that target was there. Never knew it was there. So, it, you know, it, and and it's not anybody else's fault. It's my fault. But um, there was also four other people in our squad that never knew it was there. Hmm. And the only reason I didn't get it is because the guy, I was second, okay, on that stage, the guy ahead of me didn't make it that far. Okay. Oh, so I didn't get to see him go down there. And then I w- and then I was up, and the RO was like, "Oh, you left that target." And I was like, "What target?" He's like, "Take ten steps forward," because I shot everything from way further yeah. back, you know. And I was like, "Huh?" <laughs> you know. Well, nobody missed that target after that. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Was that stage two? Um, yeah, I think so. In yeah. the woods, yeah. yeah. Shotgun pistol, mm-hmm. and I crushed that stage. I ran like. 26 seconds or something. Well, you get that one target. No, my raw time was 26 seconds, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so if, if someone had just said, hey, uh, there's another target you forgot. you know, And, and so the argument of the guys who are going to win don't need it is invalid mm-hmm. because there's always some mistake that you make that could make you go faster. And, and then they say, well – the other guy who beat you is still going to beat you because then they're going to get them. Not, not necessarily true because mm-hmm. it depends on how many mistakes you made versus how many mistakes they made, you know, that could be corrected by someone just falling behind and coaching mm-hmm. air quotes. I gotcha. Do you Dave? I do. <laughs> compelling argument you make there. Well, I mean, it, it, I don't really have to make a compelling argument. I'm just not going to go, you know? <laughs> so I don't, Oh no, no, no. I, I'm, I'm just, <laughs> I'm giving I'm you both. Saying. I'm giving you both sides and telling you why I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> you should make a button out of that. And just play it sometimes. <laughs> That'll be hell yeah, no shit. God, <sighs> that's a good Nick Atkinson quote. Uh, why did he cut his Doc Holiday mustache? Question mark. This is Brandon Wallen, by the way. Um, I wanted to eat ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> Number two from Brandon Wallen. He's one of the fastest uh, parentheses accurate trigger pullers out there. I'd like to know what he is seeing while that is happening and how he is, uh, how his vision skills progressed to where they are now. So uh, Jerry talks about this a lot. Mm-hmm. If you've ever talked to Jerry about shooting fast, he says you can only shoot as fast as you can see, right? Um, and I agree 100% with that, right? Um, a lot of it is, it's almost rhythmic, you know, like if you've got a target array and you shoot some choppy rhythm, then um, that's, in my opinion, going to mess you up more than really aiming. Okay, I'm talking about like seeing a good sight picture pulling the trigger one mm-hmm. time, right? Because if you have a good rhythm and you practice that good rhythm, then it's muscle memory. And people argue one way or the other against muscle memory, but it there, I mean, it's, it's a real thing because I know when I draw my gun out of a holster and I point it, I know within probably four inches at 10 yards where it's pointed. That's muscle memory, Mm -hmm. right? Um, so once you get that muscle memory down, if you know where in your good shooting stance and your good grip, you know where that gun is pointed, then it all just becomes seeing the targets. Right. And, and that's, it's a good question because he's asking where you're looking. I'm typically looking, let me think about this for a second and envision it. Um, 
For Tip- those of you listening at home, Nick has his arms outstretched and he's dry firing <laughs> on the wall. <laughs> Typically, I'm looking at the target um, until I see the sights, like the rear and the front sight, both covering the target, mm-hmm. um, no matter what size it is, somewhere around the target. And then I rely a lot on muscle memory, really, to mm-hmm. line up those sights, right? As I'm breaking that shot, my eyes are transitioning to the next target. And as I'm breaking my second shot, my gun is transitioning to the next target, if we're talking about paper targets, Mm -hmm. right? Um, If we're talking about steel targets, it's pretty much one shot per target unless you've got a bunch of makeups. And the hardest thing to make yourself do on steel targets is be transitioning as you're breaking that first shot and allow the recoil to transition your gun for you. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So that if you shoot... When you break that shot, as the gun comes up, it's coming back down on the next target. Right. Because in your brain, you want to make sure that that target's a hit before you go to the next one. Mm -hmm. Right? Well, if it's a close target array, you're wasting like a quarter second every target by doing that, by confirming that it's a hit. Okay? So, a lot of people get hung up on like plate racks um, at at whatever. What's a tough plate rack distance? 18 yards? Yeah, I man, that's 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 easily doable, but it can it can hang you up. And and the th- part that I don't understand is like all of a sudden it's a rack, and now it's more difficult than if it were just a, you know, target sitting on a. Well, no, I don't think that's it. But I'm talking about trying to go fast across this rack. Right. You know what I mean? So okay. I've figured out the speed that I can go, um, just ding 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 six across, right, and confirming that I'm hitting everything versus using that muscle memory, seeing that pistol come up and transition to the next target as it's coming down and actually have a couple of makeups and it's way faster than confirming those shots, even with eight or nine shots versus six Mm -hmm. because I'm not losing that confirmation time and that muscle memory is helping me hit targets anyway. So what I've figured out is um, that I can really push on the gas and even if I have three or four or five makeups even, I'm still right there in contention for the fastest time on that stage. But if I hook up, I'm gone. You know, <laughs> nobody's catching me. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So it's it's kind of like you got to figure out what that happy medium is as far as rhythm goes and as far as transitions go. But not waiting for that confirmation and really just transition to the next target with your eyes first, then your gun, you know, as it's coming down and recoil, breaking the next shot. Huh. I mean, think about it. No, I ding, yeah, ding, 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 ding versus ding, 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 ding. You know, I mean, ding, 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 pow, 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 ding, ding, ding. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you just look at the overall time right. and the three makeups were so fast. And yeah, you know, I mean it's and that goes back and it's almost a Jerry theory too, accuracy by volume. Right. Um, but when you do it enough and you only have that one makeup or no makeups, mm-hmm. man, you crush people, you know. How often uh do you practice these days? Um, what do you mean these days? Define these days. Like now. Like I'm sure your your um your practice volume has gone up gone down over your shooting your three gun shooting career yeah, your but timeline I mean, but you say now i mean do you mean like the last two years or do you mean like the last two weeks or oh okay um let's say from january 1st 2017 mm-hmm. to june 5th 2017 so i'm um probably not practicing as much as i did at this time last year right because uh, a lot of focus has been on beastmaster mm-hmm. and prototyping weapons and going and getting content and editing that content and making contacts throughout the day. And, you know, there's a lot of things that uh, I like to practice in the middle of the day. You know, you went with me to the range. Mm -hmm. I like to go out of the range at like one o'clock. Um, and there's a lot of business that transacts between one and 5 PM. (laughs) So it's, it's like, if I can't get to the range during that time frame, I'm probably just not going to go. Okay. So, um, probably a little bit less, but I've still shot the same number of matches. I think I'm at six matches for the year. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, and I haven't shot anything in June. I think I was done with matches at like the beginning of May. So I shot the same, if not more matches this year than last year. So what's your next match? It's an August pro-am. I think you take July off, right? 
June, July, and most of August. Just oh, you do because it's it's so hot. It's I don't it, you gotta have fun. You know, right. I don't have fun if it's miserable. You know, I don't have fun when it's raining. <laughs> <laughs> Better find a new sport, buddy. <laughs> 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 or or pull a Tischhauser. Yeah, that's right. Calling Jesse out. <laughs> Hey, man. Sign up for all the matches and then don't go if the forecast is bad. I won my division because of that. <laughs> well, division of one. <laughs> hey, dude, there's another guy there. Oh, okay. Well, then you did win. Good, <laughs> good job, Dave. <laughs> all right. So Michael Ford says, uh, should be an awesome interview, exclamation point. I want to know how to get his mythical power of long-range offhand shooting, three exclamation points. Um, <clears throat> practice? You know, I don't know. What it it depends on long range. I mean, you really need a definition of long range offhand shooting. Is it like go out and do a one off 700 yard shot just because it's funny and you, it gets a lot of shares on yeah, social maybe that's media what he's referring to, or did you actually do that? You, you faked that, right? No, really? That was the first take. That's what's crazy. Well, that's what you said, but that, that's what was, that's I what figured, like it. on the seventh take you shout first take. No, that's what, and, and some, <laughs> some people do that, you know, some people do that. Um, Dude, perfect. Right. But that's what made it. That's what made it funny. Um, and that's why I kind of started laughing because I had like a box of ammo sitting behind me right. and I was like, you know, we're probably gonna have to like shoot this some and let the gun cool down and then shoot some more and it's bang first take. And here's, I'll tell you what's really <laughs> funny. And this is how, you know, I'm not lying. Okay. Um, I, uh, I have all the dope written down for that gun. Uh huh. And that was a 600 yard target, not 700, my bad. Um, and what kind of gun is it? That is a gun that Kyle Simon at Guns Plus built, and it's a 260. Okay. Uh, with proof, 260 Remington. Proof, yep. With proof barrel. Proof is it barrel, a bolt gun? Timmy Trigger, yep. Okay. Um, and uh, I mean, it's, it's like a one hole gun at 100, you know? Hmm. So, I mean, it's dead on. And. Uh, I, I've got all my dope anyway on the scope and everything. Um, and I was messing with the magnification on the scope to see what I liked standing there. Obviously, we're shooting on a, if we're shooting on a bench, I'm just going to dial it all the way up, you know, um, dial the uh, um, the dope that I need and, and shoot it. And that's that's easy because mm-hmm. it's you're on a tripod and sandbag or a bipod and sandbags. Um, well, so I'm like messing with the dial on the dope and dialing it back and dialing the all this and that. And I'm like, all right, well, let's film it. You know, let's just start. Let's get the show on the road, basically. Mm-hmm. Boom, first take, and we're laughing. And I'm because I mean, dude, you're holding, and I've got uh, a big Mark Eight on that gun. Oh, so you were holding? You didn't dial for that? No, hang on. I'm mean, holding the gun. Oh, okay. So I've got a Mark Eight on it. I had a can on it. It's already a 26 inch gun or something like that. Um, it, it is in a Magpul stock and it is a proof barrel, but it's still not like super light. It's right. probably like 12 pounds or something, you know. And so you can imagine the reticle is just all over the place. Sure. Right? And I was like, bang! And I was like, man, I don't know. And it goes, whang! And I was like, <laughs> and then the video, you know, first take, you know, whatever. It's awesome. Uh, and we're laughing about it. Well, I go to put the rifle up, right? And uh, I go to dial it back to zero, uh, my 100-yard zero. Uh-huh. It was still on it. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot to dial the 600 dope. So the and I was trying to hold right on the top edge because I know uh, with that gun I don't actually have 600 yard dope. Right. Um, I've got like a five and a 750 because the range that we that we got the dope at didn't have 600. So I just dial or I, usually whenever I shoot six I just dial for five and then hold uh, like three quarter mil or something I can't remember exactly. Um, <laughs> So I forgot. So I was holding top or holding top of the target, and it was just like just drifted just right. And that gun is a two sixty, like I said. So it shoots flat. It's right. only like three mils. Um, so it, but it probably had to be a half mil off of where I was holding to hit the bottom edge of the target, and that's what it did. It hit the very bottom edge. That's funny. Yeah. So that's how you know I wasn't faking it because <laughs> I'm telling you right now that I was a hundred yard <laughs> dope when I thought I was holding six hundred yard dope. So. Oh, my God. Got lucky, I guess. No shit. Better be lucky than good. But uh, more to answer the question, um, you know, what I what I take pride in is, like, offhand shooting at these matches where yeah, you got a plate rack at, like, 80 yards and you just destroy it. You've stressed that you know? to me quite a bit. Yeah, and a lot of it, too, is, like, uh, at USPSA Nationals this year, um, they had stages set up to where – you could run all the way to one side of the bay and use a barricade and shoot a plate rack at like 75 yards or right when the buzzer goes off, right where you're standing, you just offhand it. At 75? Yeah. I mean, and that's like, 
I mean, how much time does it take you to run 60 yards round trip, you know? Mm -hmm. So you save like 20 seconds if you can just stand there and off. And it really, it's just practice and it's just, um, knowing, and it, and it goes back to rhythm, kind of like the, the vision and letting the gun transition. It, it's like, you gotta, you gotta get that rhythm at that rifle where you know what it's going to do when it comes back down. Because we shoot all these guns that shoot super flat and everybody's like, that rifle doesn't move. It's got less recoil than a 22. Okay, come on. You know, look through an optic that's on four power. It moves. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You just got to know where it's going. And once you figure out where it's going, um, you can almost tune it to where, you know, I like to shoot plate racks left to right because I know that as I break that shot, it just, it almost jumps straight to the next plate. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. That's like what we were talking about with the uh, pistol, tar uh, pistol plate racks as well. Yeah. So, I mean, it's tune the gun, know the gun and just practice it. And then you can take that and extend it out. You know, you do that at 300 yards. It's just going to be harder. Yeah. Just take more practice. <laughs> right. Yeah. I remember the uh, first match that I shot um, past like 200 yards in a match mm -hmm. was the Thriga Nation Southwest Regional last year in 2016. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was, I forgot what stage it was, but, um, oh, it was the one you'd run past the targets on. Oh, yeah. Uh, so that had like a target at 250, 260 yards, but it was a BC zone on a MGM swinger. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I, you know, plop my rifle in the, uh, in the three gun barricade or three gun nation barricade V there and mm -hmm. ding, and then go down to prone and then shoot the uh, longer range ones. But, uh, then I watched <laughs> right immediately after that, I watched like you and Rick and, uh, Keith all do that shot offhand. I was like, huh. Oh, it, wasn't, darn. it wasn't that far. It was okay. Yeah. There was a far shot, like 300 and something. But the target you're talking about is like a. It was like a 125. Is that what it was? Yeah, yeah. There, it was like a BC at 125. I, I thought you guys shot something that was 200 or over. No, I don't think so. Because I wouldn't do that. I would just. No? I would. I would brace on the barricade. Well, you have that. a better memory. I don't know why I'm arguing. I would do that just messing around for fun and and probably hit it most of the time. Mm -hmm. But not a match. Come to a match. I want it to be one shot. You know, 100 percent, and not not leave it up to. I'm just not in the right spot or not feeling it. You know, so. I always make practice way harder than a match. Do that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Donovan, uh, Donovan Paget says, what type of weapon manipulation drills slash practice do you do? Question mark. Hopefully I'm not too late to ask. Um, you know, it's kind of, it, and I know a lot of people say this, but I, I practice what I feel like I did the worst at the last match. Mm -hmm. You know, if I go to, or I practice for whatever's upcoming, um, if I went to a match and I, like we've been talking about, I pride myself in long range shooting and I just sucked at long range shooting. Then I try to do that. Um, the next time I practice and really, I mean, I'm talking like go out and shoot 300 rounds of long range, you know, check my zero, make sure I wasn't crazy, check all my holds, make sure those are good. And then just do all positional, uh, long range shooting, shoot reverse kneeling, shoot double kneeling, shoot prone, shoot off the top of a barrel, shoot off of a barrel, turn sideways, um, shoot off of a railing standing, shoot off of a tree, you know, braced with your hand against the tree, shoot off of a smaller tree, shoot off of a tree limb, shoot off of a rock. I mean, just try to think of every messed up position you've ever been dealt at a match and go practice it, uh, for a day. And then after that, you know, do some refreshers here and there. Um, and that goes for everything. If, if we were talking about plate racks, you know, at 18 yards, if you had a match where there's a plate rack at 35 yards um, and you just absolutely sucked on it, then go go set up a plate rack and mow it down at 7 yards and go back to 10 yards and mow it down at 10 yards and then go back to 15 yards and see how far you can push it until you need to start practicing it. Um, and as far as weapon manipulation, I've never really done a lot of, like, transition drills because – uh, I'm a firm believer of the just throw it down. <laughs> and that's one of the reasons I shoot a Glock. <laughs> um, like I've got pictures of still still shots where I've let the gun go way before it's in the bucket. Right. You know, and you can't do that with a 2011. I mean, I guess you can. You can do anything you want, but good luck. Um, so, and, I, and I've always been a very, I've always been very deliberate in how I handle guns as far as, um, when something comes out of the holster or goes in the holster or anything like that, it's like you take a, you take it, you turn in the seven steps, you practice that and mm -hmm. then you ingrain that. And it's like, you know, it's like breathing. You just do it. So, 
Um, I don't know. I just never felt like I required a lot of weapon handling stuff, you know, and I think it's just because I, I, I like to be very precise in everything. And I think it just comes naturally, you know? Hmm. Um, but really it's just, I practice what, uh, I practice what I feel like I, I, I need to really work on at the time. And then that all makes a big circle, you know, by the time, by the time you work your way through everything, well, now you suck at rifle shooting again. So you yeah. start back over. <laughs> yeah. Cause you're focusing too much attention on one thing. Right. Well, I mean, you could spread it out, you know? Um, but that's not the way the human brain works. No. You know, like, I'm good. You know, I'm, no. I'm, I'm yeah, good. Yeah, I'm good exactly. with that. Exactly. I'm, just I'm doing good it. on that. I'll, or I'll shotgun loading. It. Shotgun yeah. loading. Whenever, whenever you learn how to shotgun load, it's like, yeah, man, I dry fire um, three hours a night, every night. And then on my lunch break, I practice loading a shotgun and I eat a sandwich in five minutes before I got to go back to work. <laughs> and then, you know, but then after you learn how to load and you're like good at it, you're like, well, I'm never practicing that again. <laughs> <laughs> You know, and I seriously don't remember the last time I practiced loading a shotgun. And there are guys out there whipping my ass now at loading a shotgun. Um, but at the same time, it's like uh, I need to work on some other stuff. So I'll just brush up on that in the hotel room the night before, you know. <laughs> well, yeah, this is the way it goes. Yeah. So awesome. Uh, let's see. Adam Balzer, who cuts his hair, man? <laughs> I think he's referring to that picture because my hair looks pretty. Oh yeah, awesome in that picture that you posted. Got a hat head going. Yeah, um, it's. I mean, if the, if we're answering that as a legitimate question, it is whatever haircut place I drive by and there's no wait. Nice, <laughs> nice. I always go in the morning, and that's before ten a.m. Oh, that's Just rough. Saying, dude. That's rough. Uh, Scott Green asks, "Who is winning the Squirrel War?" Um, I guess I am because they haven't killed me. And or any of my Yet. pets, um, they have they have recruited raccoons. I've caught raccoons out there. Okay, so check this out. One night, um, I, or one day, I killed four squirrels in one day. That's that's kind of a lot. Because that is usually, a lot. Usually they're only out in the morning, and we already discussed what time I like to get up. Um, so I shot four all day, and then that night the feeder got completely emptied, and I was like, it's got to be raccoons. There's nothing else that could be doing it. Squirrels aren't out at night. So the next day, um, we fill the feeders up again. Chupacabra. It gets dark. I open the door and turn on a light. Sure enough, there's a raccoon, like, hand in the cookie jar. <laughs> so I smoked him, right? <laughs> and I tried to film it. Uh, on the, it just doesn't turn out. What, um, did he stay there and, like, wait to be smoked? Oh, yeah, because he just kind of froze. You know, he, like, like if I don't move, he can't see me kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. Smoked him. And I tried to film it, uh, but the phone <laughs> phone wouldn't focus or whatever, so I just pulled the phone off and shot him. So I kind of gave up on filming that angle at night. I mean, I could get out the thermals and do it, I guess, but it, that'd be like, they're on big guns. And yeah. That'd be kind of overkill. Um, yeah. So I close it. about I, the backdrop there. I go out and I, I pick him up and chunk him off in the woods because I don't do anything with raccoons. They're nasty and um, they're only worth like $2 anymore. And you got to skin them to get $2 <laughs> for raccoons. Is there hide. like a recycling program? No, for a hide. Oh, okay. For fur. Who pays for, for furs? Who's making these hats? Fur dealers. They're fur dealers? Yeah. Still? Yeah. Huh. What do you think people do with all these hides? I have no clue. Yeah. You sell them to a fur dealer and they like ship them to Russia or something. Huh. Yeah. Anyway. Oh. So um, what you did with them all. So skin and a coon is not worth $2. <laughs> no. That's the moral of the story. Um, so <laughs> That's I, I, another good t-shirt. <laughs> skin and a coon is not worth $2. Moral of the story. Um, <laughs> so I'm like, yes, got the raccoon, you know, next morning, I wake up, feeders are empty. I'm like, how many raccoons are there? There's a many raccoons as squirrels. So, um, fill up the feeders, wait till dark. I killed another squirrel that day. Wait till dark. And these are bird feeders, right? Yeah. Yeah. And we have a lot of really cool birds here. We're actually in a bird sanctuary, um, in this region. That's right. I think you've told me that. Got to get a permit to cut down trees. That's how serious. Oh, you're kidding. Are. Nope. Um, huh. A lot of trees around here. <laughs> Must not be handing out many nope. permits. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so that night, fill the feeders again. That night, turn on a lot or turn on my flashlight. Squirt, or there's a raccoon out there, right? Smoke him, chuck him off in the woods. Uh, wait like 30 minutes. Turn on the light. There's another raccoon. Smoke him. This is like a comedy show. Yeah. So chunk him off in the woods, and I uh, think he's reincarnating. Like Super Mario? I don't know. He could be. No, they're different sizes. Well, he could be getting a mushroom. Yeah. Boop, boop, boop. 
do, 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 do. Uh, wait a little while longer, open the door, shine my light out there, don't see anything, so I kind of sweep across to the other bird feeder, and there's a fox standing there, eating out of the bird feeder, a fox. You're kidding. I'm not kidding. He was up on his back feet, and he's like, got his front paws on it, and this one's like low, it's on the log that's uh-huh. straight out the front door, and yeah. he's like, smoke the fox. Bam, right? So I have to chunk him off out in the woods. The next morning, feeders are empty. I'm like... What the hell is going on here? Do you think you're going to pull in something bigger by by uh, throwing all this uh, fresh meat out into no, the woods? No, the buzzards get them. Oh, okay. Uh, like the next... The and buzz- then you smoke the buzzards? No, it's illegal. Oh. Um, the buzzards get them in less than a day. I gotcha. So there's two buzzards that we have that live out there, and they just, they're just like... They probably worship me. They love you. Yeah. <laughs> 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 they probably... <laughs> they probably they probably go like eat like all the raccoon and then take a paw or take a skull and like add it to their shrine that's got a picture that you know fell out of our boxes while we we're moving of me or something <laughs> that they've got built. It would be man, that could be a TV show too. The giver of the meat. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, it's a different show entirely. So his feeders are empty again. So fill them up the next night. This is like four nights later. And finally, I figured it out um, because I had my wife watch out the window. Mm -hmm. And I told her, as soon as I turn the lock, turn your light on. And she said that there was a raccoon that as soon as there was two out there this time, as soon as I turn the lock, one of them takes off. So (laughs) one of them has figured out that when you hear the click, click of the lock, he needs to get out. And he doesn't tell his buddies. So you only have to be faster than the slowest raccoon. Yeah. I mean, basically, it's like when you're running from a bear. Yep. Just got to beat your buddy. Um, wow. So there's one raccoon. Guy's that's, a buddy fucker. <laughs> there's one raccoon that's, that's smart and, uh, and I haven't been able to get him yet. So uh, like I've tried going out the garage door. I've tried going out the back door and sneaking around <laughs> and it's like, I'm going to have to get the thermal and get him because as now, now he's figured out that when I turn on the flashlight, he's, you know, I'm about to kill something. So it's like uh, if if I've I mean I'm talking like I got the bird feeder, I've got my optic pointed right at it, and I click the light on, and he's already gone. No kidding. He's, he's figured out that uh, yeah he's he knows the sound I and mean, they're smart they're smart animals. Oh yeah, they can they can unlock anything. They're like Houdini. Right. Man, um, you need to get the Beastmaster truck and park it in your driveway. It usually get is. on the stand. It usually is, but. Uh, yeah, it wouldn't take much to actually get him. It's just, I don't, I don't, I don't want to blow his guts everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my wife would be like, the birds are out there, like pulling slime off of them. <laughs> oh yeah, that was that raccoon. So I'll get him eventually. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we have some really cool birds here. So and the and all the squirrels and all the other animals really do run them off. Like, um, have you ever seen a painted bunting? Mm-mm. That's yeah, they're crazy we, looking. We had lark buntings in Colorado. They have a purple head, state bird, a blue back, green wings, a red breast, and a yellow tail. That sounds like a tropical bird. Yeah, painted bunting is what they're called. Crazy. So we've had two of them here that kind of come and hang out at the feeders. And when the squirrels are around, no birds come to the feeder. Huh. Um, and then obviously the raccoons like eat everything. So that's why they all die. <laughs> Do you want some squirrel meat? Nope. Oh, okay. Thanks. You know, a squirrel is a game animal. Is it? Yep. Got to harvest it. Oh, that's why you had all the squirrel jerky? (laughs) I haven't tried squirrel jerky. I've never actually tried it. I just give it away. Ah, interesting. Yeah. All right, then. Um, So, I don't know. Am I winning? Or who's winning? I think the raccoons are winning. Sounds like the raccoon. Well, that one raccoon. That one raccoon. So, I guess me and him, maybe we tied. Oh, dude, you guys are like the uh, the nemesis's... You're like the uh, the boss at the end of the... Spy versus Spy. Oh, my God. That's awesome. All oh, right. and he even has the mask, like Spy versus Spy. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a white hat? Maybe. I could come up with one, probably. <laughs> what? <No>, the- <laughs> All right. Zach Weaver says, uh, more travel stories, exclamation point. Nick has the best travel stories. Man. Um, lately, we've been traveling to hunt, and it's like... You wake up at nine in the morning, pack the truck, start driving, drive for like six hours, hunt all night and drive back. So I'm sure there's really a good story in there, but it's, uh, everybody's too tired to remember it. Um, 
Man, I don't know. And I told you this the other day. You texted me about it. And I said, I've yeah. got a lot of stories. You just have to be really specific. At like, yeah. what occurred on this trip, you know, <laughs> or whatever. Um, trying to think of one off the top of my head. And I can't. I can't, Dave. <laughs> oh, I'll tell you one. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Kyle, who we've talked about quite a bit on the show, uh, is my usually my traveling partner. And, um, we somehow forgot what time our flight was going. I think we were going to Virginia for a match or something. And, uh, luckily we fly, we were flying Southwest, but we get all loaded up. He comes and picks me up. We go to the, um, uh, airport and we go to check in or check our bags. And the lady goes, you're going to miss this flight. And we're like, what are you talking about? We're like an hour and a half early. It was a two o'clock oh, flight, not guns. a four o'clock flight. You've got guns too, so we got there at like one fifty-five because <laughs> <laughs> we were thinking it was at at four, right? So we're like, well, okay, when's the next flight? So she tells us it's like it's at like five thirty or something like that. So okay, so we put all of it. We get back on the shuttle, go back to our car, drive back out of the thing, and then we're like, let's go ride go karts. <laughs> So we drive all the way across town and the go-kart place is closed. <laughs> right? So we're like, well, what are we going to do now? Uh, I don't know. We need to eat. And uh, so we're like, well, let's go downtown since it's on the way back across town and we'll eat some like really good food. So we went to Fogo de Chao and it's like an all you can eat steak meat yeah, place. Like Brazilian. And, yes. Yeah. And so we went there and, uh, by the time we got over there and got sat down, we had like 15 minutes. All you can eat steak. <laughs> so, so we're both just like, every time somebody walks by, we're like, give us a big piece of that. You know? Choking on steak. Yeah, we're, we're going to pay like $60 for a meal. Right. And we're going to, you got to get your money's worth, whether right. it's 15 minutes or. And then it'll let you put it in your pockets. You got to put it in your stomach. Yeah, I mean, we're well, not watching. So we eat all that. And then. Uh, <laughs> We make it to the airport in time. Whatever we fly out to the match, nothing really crazy happens to the match. We got a rental car. No, we were going to Oregon. That's what it was. Um, because I remember. So um, we go shoot the match, and um, the plan was get done with the match at like 6 p.m. Our flight was the next morning. We were going to drive to the airport, drop our car off, um, and I think we were just going to sleep in. The, oh, no, no, no. It was like a six hour drive. Sorry, this is a long time ago. I'm trying to remember all the details. It was like a six-hour drive to the airport. Okay. And uh, so we figure we leave there at six. We drive, drop our rental car off. We get to the airport at like one in the morning by the time everything's said and done, get our bags check, checked. And we, we've only got to wait like a few hours for our flight because it was a super early flight. And uh, <clears throat> we get there and the rental car place is closed. <laughs> Makes sense. Okay. Close at midnight. The rental car place opens at the same time that we're supposed to be boarding our plane. <laughs> So we're like, what are we going to do? We can't like just leave the car because they didn't have a key drop off oh, thing yeah. or anything. And you can't just lock the keys in the car the because gate was, there are no keys. No, no, the gate was closed too. Oh, so we couldn't no just like pull it in their parking lot either. Yeah. So, and we were in some little piece of crap, um, like Hyundai accent or something. Cause we always rent the smallest car possible. Cause it's for one, it's funny. It's cheap. And uh, yeah, too, it's the cheapest. Tell me you jumped the fence. No. So we ended up sleeping in this parking lot. <laughs> Of like an industrial area of Portland, Oregon. And uh, it was pretty much like we slept in shifts because there's people walking by all the time. <laughs> and like kind of like you could tell they wanted to come look in the car. Yeah, but then they would, yeah, but then they would see that there's somebody in it. And um, I don't have a concealed carry license because I was a cop for so long that I I carried a gun um, because state law would allow me to. Uh, and whenever I left that, I just never... I just never have made time to go do it. Mm -hmm. You know, I need to, and, it's, and I carry it. But luckily in Texas, we can carry a lot of guns without it. Uh, but we're in Oregon. And, and um, there's no reciprocity <clears throat> for nothing. I don't know. Is there in Oregon? Well, not if you don't have a concealed carry permit. Well, yeah, duh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, uh, and, I, and I can't remember what it was. We looked <clears throat> up something about handguns, and it was kind of sketchy, even if you had a license, mm -hmm. whether you could or not, or something. Well, I don't remember. And here, here's a weird thing that you, maybe you can tell me this, and maybe this isn't interesting to the audience. We should talk about it later. But in uh, Colorado, um, uh, a firearm inside your vehicle is your domain, just mm -hmm. like your home. That's the way Texas is. Okay, so I can have a loaded pistol and... It just has to be concealed. Okay. Yeah. 
Even if I don't have a concealed carry permit? If you're in your vehicle and you have a handgun, the handgun has to be concealed. Okay. Now, if you don't have a concealed handgun license and it's on your person, it better be off your person by the time you get out of the car. Right. You know what I mean? Right. But yeah. So, that's, yeah. Anyway. Um, so, we've got, we like crack open our gun cases and like load one magazine, you know, and we've got guns stuffed everywhere like that we think it would potentially be accessible. Um, <laughs> and uh, I didn't sleep hardly at all. And oh, and we were almost at gas too. Like, <laughs> So much to the point where we probably couldn't make it to a gas station, so we couldn't run the car. And it was like 80 degrees. It was like a heat wave in Oregon. (laughs) (laughs) We don't want to roll the windows down because somebody's going to like sneak up on us and drag us out of the window or something, you know? So, I mean, it was just a nightmare. (laughs) And uh, so I I think the the rental car place opened at like 4, and our flight left at 4.30. And um, so it was pretty much we're sitting there at the gate, like hadn't slept in 20 something <laughs> hours. Like open the gate. You got guns. Open the gate. You know, it's like tapping on the, gla- it's like the crazy cat tapping on the glass to get in, you know, open, open. you know, so they opened the gate and it was pretty much, we just like handed them the keys and left, you know, got on the, uh, where's the shuttle. Okay. Well now we got to get a shuttle and we, we got on the shuttle and we paid the driver to not pick anybody else up. <laughs> oh, you <laughs> Yeah, because we're gonna miss our flight, right? <laughs> and then the, oh, Can you uh, imagine him just be like. Ah. <laughs> so the next flight is like, a, so it's not a problem whenever you fly Southwest or the way the tickets that we had when on the way there, we could just take the next flight and it wasn't there was no charge extra or whatever, mm-hmm. uh, as long as there's room. Well, I remember in that parking lot, we we're surfing the web while we had battery life because killed our cell phone batteries too because we had nothing else to do, <laughs> you know, and can't run the car. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so we look at all the flights. Well, all the flights are booked after that. So it's like either we're getting on this plane or we're staying another day uh, in Portland, Oregon, which is about as bad as Austin. You know, it's just like a bunch of hippies. Um, so uh, we pay the driver to just just go, you know. And we got in there and they took our bags and we got on the plane and got home. But man, that, that was a rough trip. <laughs> That's awesome. The fact that you paid the uh, driver not to pick you up. <laughs> And it didn't take much either. Because <laughs> it was like, uh, we got on the bus and we were like, listen, we're going to miss our flight and there's no other flights today. We got to go. What would it take to just go straight to the airport? And he was like, what do you got? You know, and it was like, $20? And he was like, <laughs> 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 yeah. Yep. It was pretty sweet. So That's awesome. That's a good one. I almost, I almost completely forgot about sleeping in that parking lot. Man, tried to block it out. Yeah, no kidding. Repressed memories. Yep. All right. We got another one from uh, Michael Youngblood Fitzhugh. Can I get an enhanced Beastmaster? An enhanced Beastmaster? What is he talking about? I don't know. Maybe. I thought that was some sort of inside joke. I don't know. He works for Kyle, so it's probably <coughs> oh, some does? kind of inside uh, joke that he thinks is a joke. I don't know. Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> It'll cost you how much you got. <laughs> And that that uh that wraps it up for our our questions. Awesome. Our Q&A. Good times. Nick, uh I got one for you though. Have you um you don't dry fire now. Have you ever dry fired other than loading shotgun? Oh yeah. Yeah? Yeah, I dry fire pistol a lot. Um and I still do sometimes. We oh, do. Yeah. It's you know, it's just not one of those things that I've got it on the schedule to go do it. Mm-hmm. Um I dry fire a lot whenever I get out to the range actually. Like just spend 15 minutes dry firing. Yeah. Just to warm up a little bit. Um, hotel rooms see a lot of dry firing because there's nothing else to do. <laughs> and what I like to do is um, watch a TV show, and whichever character I like the least is it gets shot every time. Um, every time that you know that person comes up on screen. Right. So a lot of times, whenever there's quick transitions, you're like <laughs> <laughs> you're like chasing them across, the, and you always pick a spot. Like you got to shoot them in the eye or something right. like that. You know. So it makes it pretty entertaining. Nice. Helps with target transitions and stuff like that. There you go. Or moving targets. Nice. Hunting. <laughs> Hunting. Uh, the the ultimate prey. Um, predator. Most dangerous. The predator. Most dangerous. Most dangerous game. Game. Man. <laughs> we get into that one in the other episode, so if yeah. that didn't make any sense or sounds creepy, you might want to listen to that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, Nick, dude, always a pleasure. Uh Thanks to everyone that submitted uh, questions. If you like this uh, style of format, comment and let us know. Yeah. Don't ask any more questions because we're done. That's right.
<laughs> BeastmasterHunting.com. BeastmasterHunting.com. Beastmaster Hunting on Facebook. Beastmaster Hunting on Instagram. We're everywhere. <laughs> YouTube. YouTube. Beastmaster that, that's Hunting. That's where the funniness is. Nick Atkinson. Watch the episodes. Share them. Laugh at them. Tell us. And that's another thing, too, is tell us. Tell me what you want to see on the episodes. Yeah. So I can do it. Well, and that's how Beastmaster Hunting came about, right? Is someone said, hey, I want to see more of hunting with thermals. Okay. Yeah, but we we were already doing that. I mean, tell me if you want to see something different. You know, tell me if you want to see a particular animal or a particular place or something like that. The most dangerous game. Probably not that. (laughs) Are you volunteering? No, no, no. <laughs> you run around with ice packs on to cool yourself off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like uh, Predator, I cover myself in mud. Yeah, that doesn't work. Dude, it does. I saw it in the movie. Well, that Predator didn't have a very good thermal then. <laughs> no, it's only it's alien technology. <laughs> All right, Nick, thanks for, uh, thanks for playing along, man. It's been fun. Thanks for having me, Dave. Hey, before you take off, check out the show notes again at 3gunshow.com slash episode 158 for links to stuff that Nick and I talked about in the podcast, including the link to the Q and a, uh, I guess just the cues that were on a uh, three gun talk, uh, Facebook group. Also, you can join the, the three gun talk Facebook group again, if you're a good person and, uh, and you can uh, play nice with people because, uh, that's the kind of people we want in this sport. So pretty cool announcement here. The born to three gun t-shirt that, uh, that Zach Weaver designed, uh, a long time ago, like back in October of 2015 is coming back. And uh, we're going to do a limited run of uh, X amount of shirts. I don't know what that X is yet, but we're kind of trying to gauge uh, excitement. And right now I have two polls open. And those are for what color shirt do you want? So I basically narrowed down the men's shirts with the uh, the Patreon group and the, the lady shirts with uh, a select group of uh, lady three gunners. And I asked, like, hey, what colors would you like to see? And so we, we picked three colors for each and others voting. And those uh, links to voting, again, 3 slash episode 158, jump on it quick because they're not going to be around there too long if you listen to these in the future. But 3Gun Show, excuse me, Born to 3Gun shirts are, uh, are coming back and uh, be the first to know about it by getting on the email list, again, at 3 So as always, this show is also brought to you by Armalite, and Armalite has given the 3Gun Show listeners an opportunity to grab special pricing on uh, Armalite's line of three-gun rifles and their accessories, so like muzzle brakes, gas blocks, hand guards, and full rifles and upper receivers as well. And I've been shooting an Armalite rifle for the 2017 season, and it is delightful. I love it. So if you are in the market for a rifle or components to build your own, just email me, dave at threegunshow.com, and uh, and I'll hook you up with a good price on it. Um, Last but not least subscribe in itunes google play or wherever you uh wherever you get your podcast content and leave a review thank you so much for downloading listening and subscribing to the show i'm dave hartman and i'll see you on the range if you are finished unload show clear